So as I was saying, rhythm is all about the sounds which we emphasize. And so the rhythm in the English language is all about emphasizing syllables, but also words. We emphasize whole words within sentences. Now you may wonder what I'm holding here. So this is actually a page from my book. And I'm sure that by the time you watch this, my book will be published. And so you'll be able to hold up the real copy. But at the moment, I just have this one page here. And I'm going to read off some quotes. And I'm going to emphasize the key words within these quotes. And I'd just like you to have a listen and to see whether you can guess what I'm doing, which kind of words I'm emphasizing. The first one, actually, I know. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Now, this is Mahatma Gandhi, isn't it? You may have noticed that I emphasized all the important words. So, be the change you wish to see in the world. So, we tend to emphasize verbs, adjectives, adverbs. In fact, we emphasize most words. I'm going to now read off the words that I didn't emphasize, and you'll see that they have very little meaning. The, that, you, to, in the. Those words don't mean much on their own. Whereas if I were to say just the words that I just emphasized, they still make quite an impact. Be, change, wish, see, world. So you can almost guess what that's about, can't you? So I'm using my voice to highlight the key words to really give you a better idea of what I would like to say. And not only is this clearer, it's also more engaging. It means that as an audience, I'm helping you along a bit. If I were to just say, be the change you wish to see in the world, you probably wouldn't be listening. In fact, you'd probably be thinking of one of those 15,000 thoughts that we have a day. That's a lot of thoughts, isn't it? And this is what we're competing against when we're speaking. We're competing against other people's minds. What they're going to have for dinner, what they've got to do this evening or tomorrow, concerns, worries. And so by using our voice, we can kind of draw in our audience. And this is how we enable them to really hear what it is we're saying. Because there's a difference, isn't there, between hearing and listening. And when you really take in information, you're able to go away and repeat it. And that's the kind of lasting impression that we want to make. Let me give you some more sentences to see whether you can start to pick these things up. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than the ones you did do. So throw off the bowlines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. There were a lot of key words there, weren't there? So let's just go through some of them again. 20 years from now. More disappointed. Things didn't do. Ones did. Throw off bowlines. Sail away. Safe harbor. Catch trade winds. Explore, dream, discover. So you'll notice it's all those keywords. A lot of them are action-based, aren't they? I'm saying explore, dream, discover. And that makes a great impact. Again, if I were to just say this whole quote with no emphasis, you may find it quite difficult to listen to. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. So that time, I didn't pause. I didn't use any kind of inflection to show it was the beginning or the end. And more importantly, I didn't emphasize any words. One more sentence. Live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. 
So that makes a great impact, doesn't it? And there's some key words there. Live, as if, die tomorrow, learn, as if, live forever. So those key words really make much more entertaining listening than if I were to have just read through that without any emphasis, without any inflection. Live as if you were to die tomorrow, learn as if you were to live forever. Doesn't just, doesn't make as much impact, does it? So I think I've probably got across my point. When we emphasize important words, these are words which we conjure up a, a kind of mental picture in our minds or we connect emotionally with. So they're action words like live or die. They're words that have some kind of meaning. Whereas little words like articles and prepositions, like if and the and of and and, they don't really carry much weight. So what we're doing is we're emphasizing the words which carry more weight. There's also some other benefits of emphasizing words. And I'll share these with you throughout the next few videos.